Hello everyone, happy Tuesday, happy beautiful, sunny, warm, gorgeous Tuesday here in Southern Ontario. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Grissa, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I brought myself in from the beautiful sunshine to share with you three beautiful projects using the Ranunculus Romance Bundle from the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. Now, this bundle is one that I knew I needed to get like as soon as I saw it in the catalog because it is perfect for one of my favorite stamping techniques. I love collage stamping and collage stamping um, requires lots of sort of disparate images that work together that you can layer and this set is perfect for that. So that was like the first thing that caught my eye. I didn't even pay very close attention to the dies. I just wanted that stamp set and I knew I would have to get the bundle. So I bought it, but then I discovered how fantastic the dies are as well. And oh my goodness, I just had so much fun playing with this bundle. And now I just want to do more with it. I haven't had time, but I want to do more. So um, we are all about beautiful floral and um, some lovely collage stamping today. Um, I hope you guys are up for it. I'm just going to pull up my video here on my iPad and see who is joining me. I'm seeing lots of comments come by really quickly on my phone so quickly that I can't catch up to say <laughs> to react to them. So I'm just going to check and see. Okay, we got Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, Laura. Hi, Grace. Hi, Flo. Louise. Julie. I hope all of you are enjoying the beautiful weather um, where you are as well as, as much as I was. Um, I was out on the front steps with uh, our two kitties and they were rolling around on the concrete having a great old time. They're still out there. <laughs> they, they didn't have to come in for live at five. They just kind of are hanging out on the front porch. So um, I tore myself away to come and hang out with you guys for a little while and uh, show you these fun cards. Now, I also got my pre-order today. I did open it just before I went live. Like I opened it up because most of what is in there is in new in color product. And oh my goodness, the new in colors are fantastic. If you are someone who likes brights and that's this girl right here, um, they are absolutely awesome. I, <laughs> I can't wait to make projects with them. So I'm gonna finish my live. Then I gotta go up and make dinner and make my son a birthday card. Guess what he's getting on his birthday card? He's getting new ink colors. Uh, so I'm going to be playing with them this evening to make his birthday card. He's turning 15 tomorrow. I don't know how that happened. He's going to be driving next year. <laughs> uh, anyway, enough about me and chit chat and whatnot. Let's get to some stamping. I see a whole bunch more have joined. Who else is here? We've got Connie and Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Linda, Bonnie, Holly, Deb. All right, we are going to get to it. I'm going to flip the camera, stop yakking, and we'll do some stamping. Okay. All right. Oh, stamp. Facebook changed the controls here. There we go. There's my camera flip. Well, let's do the old flipperoo. Come on. There we go. That was not smooth. Sorry, guys, if I'm making you seasick. Let's get that. Let's see if we can get that a little straighter. There we go. All right. Hi, Jamie. Happy belated birthday. All right, so Ranunculus Romance is what we're dealing with. Here is the awesome stamp set. I mentioned how perfect it is for collage stamping, and you're going to see a couple of projects that I did with that technique. I just love these images. Um, so easy to create a really great collage background. Some lovely sentiments as well for just about any occasion. And then we have these fantastic dies. So we have some of the dies that cut out stamped images, but then we have these gorgeous detailed ranunculus dies. So this one actually fits inside this and cuts out um, a ranunculus, but this you could also use to cut a window. Um, I didn't do a card like that. I, I'm hoping to at some point this week, but um, really, really cool die. And then we've got the large leaf, a sprig. We've got a sort of a, 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 a branch that looks almost like a fleur de lis. And then of course our dies that cut out the stamped images. So that is the bundle. Super versatile. Lots of things we can do. First card we're going to make today is this one. <laughs> oh yes, Laura. I remember when I was expecting with Max too. <laughs> <laughs> that was the year I started at Preston High School. Um, I actually was not pre did not know I was pregnant at the time that I started um, at that school. And lo and behold, 15 years later, I'm still there. All right. So this is our first card. I posted this one yesterday. I um, wanted to start with a pretty simple one that really just showcases the stamps and the dies. So we've got all kinds of little bits in here I'm going to dump out. 
set aside some of them. All right, I want to highlight, first of all, this gorgeous background here. I'm not sure how well it shows up on the camera, but this is a piece of vellum that I've embossed using the Hive 3D embossing folder. This is also in the mini. And oh my goodness, when you emboss it, it looks like real honeycomb. It's absolutely amazing. And then what I did is I actually just took and tore it. And when you tear it, you're going to get sort of a jagged, uneven um, edge on it. And it's going to kind of follow um, the pattern of the honeycomb. Because this is a 3D die, um, it really etches or deeply embosses the vellum. And when you tear it, it just kind of tears along the pattern. See how it kind of follows the honeycomb? But isn't that cool? It looks like a real honeycomb. Such a cool effect. So that is what we're going to use to anchor our um, card here. I'm just going to make this a bit shorter. That's better. It was a little too long. All right. So we have this. We have um, uh, our background panel is a piece of Heart and Home DSP. Um, I've used this stuff like so much because the backgrounds are all these beautiful um, gray and white wood grain and they they work for everything. They're just so fantastic. So um, this is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And then I have a piece of hand penned DSP. So I'm mixing DSP packs, which is totally cool to do. Um, I love doing that. And so this one is from that beautiful hand pen DSP, which is retiring. So this one's going to be gone very soon if it's not already sold out. I haven't checked recently. So um, it works with so many different um, bundles and, and suites. So we're going to first glue this on to our background panel. So we'll just add, I should mention, this is cut to two by four inches. Again, I'll put all the measurements in the video description. So when you're done watching, you can scroll down. You'll have to kind of scroll down to the video description. They kind of hide it, uh, both on Facebook and YouTube. So you kind of have to look for it, but they, it's there and all the instructions will be there after I eat my dinner, <laughs> okay? All right, so there is our background. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue on this gorgeous piece of vellum. Um, so I'm going to just put, sort of some strips of seal kind of in the middle where my vellum's gonna go and I'm just gonna stick it down and the cool thing is because this is embossed we're not gonna see the adhesive okay so there is our background now we're gonna add a little bit of this frayed white ribbon now this is from the mini as well it's actually wider ribbon and I've just taken my scissors and cut it's about what quarter of an inch wide I guess and if you pull out a few of the threads, both sides end up looking the same and you can never, no one will ever know that you've actually cut that. Um, so that's, I love this ribbon for that reason. It's easy to sort of adjust, kind of adjust a width ribbon. So I'm just gonna add a couple of glue dots to either end. And we're gonna lay this across the front of our panel here um, towards the bottom of that uh, green DSP. Oop, yep, it picked up, sorry. Let's just stick that guy on there, make sure it stays put. There we go. Um, so it's gonna go sort of towards the bottom. I don't wanna put it right in the middle. Uh, visually, I feel like it looks better towards the bottom, okay? Now, then we have some die, some stamped and die cut images. So I've already gone ahead and done this ahead of time so that you don't have to watch me crank the machine and, and all of that. But I am gonna show you how I colored. I've already done this one, so we'll set that one aside. So there's sort of two floral images in this set. This one I think looks like hollyhocks maybe or delphinium and then this one is ranunculus. So we're gonna color this one first. I'm using my light balmy blue Stampin' Blends and I'm really being quick. I'm not being super super careful trying to make sure I get every little nook and cranny of the image. Um, part of that is because of the nature of these images. They're a little bit a little bit faded. They look a little bit vintage. Um, and so for that reason, think about when you look at, you know, something that's an old book and that has images in it, um, sometimes the images get faded as well. And so I kind of want my coloring to reflect that. Which one is this? Okay, so that's my balmy blue. And then I'm just going to come in with light, soft succulent and add a little bit of green to the leaves. Okay, that's all there is to it. Super simple. Now on my ranunculus, I'm also going to color the leaves. So we'll start with that just because we've got that one out. So again, I'm not being super careful. I'm just filling in really quickly some of that space. Okay, and then again, I'm going to come down 
my stem. Not being super, super careful. I mean, I'm gonna try to stay in the lines, but if I don't, that's okay. It works with this sort of vintage look that we're going for here. So just add a couple. I'm gonna add a little bit of green here, just to the to the bud there, okay? And that's all there is to that. Now, for our, our blooms, we're going to use a light so saffron. So I'm gonna color the large one first. I'm gonna color the whole thing in the light so saffron. Again, I'm being pretty quick. I'm not really taking care to make sure I get the whole image. And then I'm gonna bring in my light pale papaya. I wanted to add a little bit of an orangey or peachy hue to some of the bottom leaves here, or, or uh, petals. So then I'm just gonna come in again with my So Saffron and just blend that out a little bit. I'm not blending it all the way to the top. I want the bottom part to be a bit darker, okay? So really quick and easy to color these images. You don't have to be you know, an expert color or worry about perspective or, you know, where your light source is or any of that. It's just a matter of adding, oh, I just realized I put the wrong lid on my uh, pale papaya. We'll fix that right now. So again, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the pale papaya and then just blend that out again. Super quick and easy, okay? That's all there is to it. All right, so we are going to layer this. Now, um, you can arrange these however you like. So I put, I wanted sort of two of the, the hollyhocks, delphinium, I don't know, somebody who knows flowers can tell me what these are. Laura Bart, you probably know what these are. Um, so we're gonna glue two of them sort of behind our uh, ranunculus, but we're gonna put one on with the dimensional so we get a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive to the back of that large blossom. Oh, hi, Claire. Hi, Doris. Hi, Mary Lou. Thank you for joining me. So we're going to have one kind of peeking up that way. Okay, now this second one I mentioned we're going to put on with the dimensional. So I'm going to put a couple of mini dimensionals on here. Delphidiums. Thank you, Deb. I knew someone one, one would know. Someone would come through for me. You guys are the best. All right. So we're going to tuck this one in behind and again it's on it it's going to be adhered with some dimensional so it has a little bit of depth there okay then to the back of that one that we just popped up we're going to add a couple of sprigs now these are also cut using the same dies but i cut them from another pattern in the hand pen petals dsp pack it's the the so saffron um pattern and i i like the variation in color and i just think it's nice and soft and it works well with um what i've got going on here Sometimes it's fun to die cut uh, florals or leaves from DSP rather than cardstock. It's just a different look. Now I'm going to trim this little guy a little bit shorter because we don't need all that length. And we're going to tuck this one kind of coming out this way like that. No, oh, I don't like that. We're going to angle it more. There we go. That's better. Okay, now that is going to get stuck to the front of our panel here. So again, I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals. So the parts that are going to need to get popped. So I'm gonna tuck a couple in behind here because these guys are gonna be flat and these guys are popped. So you just have to kinda think about which ones are going to be right against the background and which ones are going to pop out a little bit. So we'll just get rid of all of these backings. And a little guy under there. Can hear you. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of seal just to kinda Make sure everything stays put. So that's gonna to go towards the left side, right about there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and glue this onto our card base and then we're going to do a bit of embellishing. So our card base here is Smoky Slate cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll just fold that in half along our score line. And we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our DSP panel. And then we're gonna pop this on just like that, okay? Now, to stamp our sentiment, I just have a little um, half inch, quarter inch, half inch scrap of basic white cardstock. And I have my Just Because stamp. I'm just gonna stamp that in some basic gray ink. Just hopefully relatively centered. I'm gonna move this down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here, guys. Hope you're okay with that. 
that's not bad. We can live with that. And then I'm going to bring in my beloved, soon to be retired, Taylor Tag Punch. Um, you may still see this make a, a cameo appearance now and again in my videos because I'm just not ready to say goodbye to it. <laughs> I love it too much for this reason. It is perfect for punching banner ends on your projects. Now this I need to trim a little bit off the other end. And this is going to get tucked in behind my ranunculus there and just kind of be peeking out. So we're going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of that. Hi, Cheryl. You found me. Welcome. So we'll go one and two. We'll get rid of our backings here. And oh, I, I hope you all, I hope I've shown you how valuable a punch it is. I hope you will all miss it. And if you haven't got it yet, get it soon. <laughs> because I don't know what the inventory levels are like. They don't really tell us how many are left. All they tell us is when it's gone. So uh, just be forewarned. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of um, a, bit, a bit of a bow treatment here because you know me, I love my bows. I will say though, the next two cards don't have a bow. Oh yeah, the last one does, sorry. The next card doesn't have a bow. All right, so we're just gonna take and slide a little bit of linen thread underneath that ribbon. And this is one of the rare times you're gonna see me tie a bow on something that is lying flat. Okay, I don't often do that. Uh, but for this little treatment, um, it's the best way to do it. So I'm gonna tie a double knot first. That's so that I gather my ribbon nice and tight. And by tying a double knot, it makes it easier to tie the bow and have, the, have it stay nice and taut. Okay, I don't want that to slip. All right, now I'm just gonna take and tie my bow. This is just like tying your shoes. No bunny ears on this one. Come here. See, I'm much better at bunny ears. There we go. And then we just play around with our loops until we get something we like. And you also wanna play around with your tails. You wanna make sure your tails are going in the direction you want them. You kinda of don't want them sticking out all any which way. So I'll just pull that nice and tight and then I'm gonna trim my tails a little bit. There we go, there's our cute little bow. The last touch, because I have a honeycomb background, I could not resist adding one of our little honeybee trinkets. These are also retiring. So if you haven't got a pack of these, you may wanna scoop one of them up as well. They're the cutest little things. These are actually part of the Pansy Petal Suite in the annual catalog. So adorable. So we're gonna add just a little honeybee. Okay, and there we go. There's card number one done. Super simple. Now on the inside of my sample, I stamped um, another ranunculus and colored it the same way I did on the front, um, just on a piece of basic white cardstock. Okay, left it really plain on the inside. All right, so that's number one done. Quick and easy one. And we're gonna move on to number two. Clean up my mess here a little bit. All right, number two is this pretty one that I posted earlier today. Now, I was just in a pinky kind of mood when I was playing with this set, and so I pulled out all my pink inks and decided I wanted to use all my pink inks on one card. So that's what I did. So we have tons of stamps on this one, and that's because I created a collage background. So I'm gonna give you some tips for collage stamping. Um, collage stamping is super forgiving but you have to do a little bit of advanced planning when you're doing this, okay? Um, so you have to think about which image you want to kind of be the one that's in the foreground, okay? So for me, it was this sort of border stamp. That was the one that I kind of wanted to be the most prominent in my collage, okay? The next one was this little ticket, okay? Then we have our um, sort of postage, can or cancel, what is that? Postmark, that's what I'm trying to say. And then we have this sort of ledger image. So you kind of have to think about which ones are gonna be the most prominent and which ones are gonna kind of fade back a little bit. Okay, that's just a little tip for that. So to start here, we're going to start with just a piece of basic white cardstock, four by five and a quarter. And we are going to do a little blending. So I'm using polished pink to blend. So I've got um, a light, a medium, and a dark pink. Okay, I should probably show you those colors first. Let me just close the back up for a sec. Okay, so we've got our Flirty Flamingo, Polished Pink, and Melon Mambo. Now, Polished Pink and Melon Mambo look like they're pretty close, but they're actually less, not as close as they look on, on the stickers on the um, 
the ink pads, okay? All right, so we're gonna start with our polished pink, which is our medium pink. And we're going to do a little blending to give us a little bit of an ombre soft background. So I'm using our blending brushes, which are simply fantastic. Um, they are honestly a game changer. If you are someone who hesitates to blend ink because you have a hard time getting consistent pressure when you're using a sponge or a dauber, um, these are, they, they will solve your problem. <laughs> um, the cool thing about these is they're flexible. Okay, see the amount of give. So when you are blending, it's almost impossible to press too hard to get those sort of splotches that we sometimes get when we're using sponges or daubers. Um, we just get beautiful, even color. And it's just so, so easy to use. So I'm kind of coming on from the bottom and I am working my way, my way upwards. I kind of want the top portion of my um, cardstock here to be the lightest okay the bottom is going to be my darkest um, you could certainly change that up or try to get it all even it's it's totally up to you uh, whatever you like um, you could also blend with a lighter shade of pink if you wanted to it would take you a little bit longer to get uh, sort of the depth of color um, I like to blend usually with a darker shade because I have to apply less ink to get um, sort of a, a, a bit of an ombre gradient effect. So I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Hi, Krista. I bet you were outside enjoying the sunshine too. It is so nice out. Hi, Zana. How are you? Glad you made it. Oh, see, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at comments. I got a little... Well, carried away there. That's okay. We can hide that. That's what, like I said, um, collage stamping is super forgiving. You can hide all kinds of oopses. All right. That looks pretty good. It could be a little darker, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Okay. All right. So we are going to start with our um, sort of ledger stamp. I don't know what else to call it. It looks like an, an old handwritten ledger. And I'm going to start with my, what am I using? I'm using my polished pink, same ink that I used on my background. And I'm going to ink this up. This ink pad's going to be fairly dry by this point because I've done a lot of blending with it, but that's okay. So I'm going to try my best to stamp this straight. So I'm kind of trying to line up the lines on the image with the edges of my cardstock here so that I can try to get something that is semi-straight. Um, if you have a hard time stamping straight, it, this, does not, this image does not have to be straight, okay? Don't feel like it's required. You can certainly... Um, stamp it cockeyed. If you're going to do it cockeyed, do it purposely cockeyed. <laughs> That's kind of my 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 go-to and I'm going to do. If I'm not sure it's going to stamp straight, then we do it crooked on purpose. Okay, so there is our ledger or ledger image, I guess I should say. Um, next up, we are going to stamp our um, border image. Now, this stamp is not cut properly. Can you see how low this is? Low and crooked. So I had a heck of a time trying to stamp this straight. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I really should call Stampin' Up and get them to replace this one because it's really crooked. If you look on the sticker, it looks beautiful. But if you look at the stamp, it does not reflect what the sticker looks like. <laughs> so I will probably be calling and uh, getting that one replaced uh, because I'm not, It's it makes it a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to do a little bit of a practice run. Now I did mount this in such a way that if I line up the bottom edge of my block, it stamps straight. Took me a little while to get that, but I did figure out that that would work. So I'm going to line up the bottom edge of my block. I'm going to try to. It's really hard to do when I'm um, not looking straight down on my work here. So we're going to do that guy. I'm going to do one over here. Again, attempting to get this relatively straight. That's not bad. And then we're going to add one over here. Always helps to start with straight paper, straight cardstock when you're trying to stamp something straight. Okay, I think I'm going to, oh, no, I'll do one more up in this corner here. I'm going to actually flip this over. It'll be easier to do if it's upside down. So let's put one right about there. Yeah, that works. I like it. Okay. Hi, Martine. Oh, your car is nice and clean. You want to come do mine, Krista? <laughs> it is looking seriously grungy. All right, next up, we are going to use this sort of ticket stamp, and I'm using Melon Mambo ink. So this is a darker pink, and I'm going to stamp a few of these. You'll notice I'm not really doing much here. That's where my focal image is going to go, so I'm not really worried about 
uh, filling in too much space there. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to bring in my basic gray and my postage or postmark stamp. And I'm gonna ink it up, I'm gonna stamp off once because I don't want it to be super dark. Remember how I talked about the fact that we wanna kind of have images that fade into the background and others that are more prominent, okay? So this is one that I kinda wanna fade a little bit, okay? And that's all there is to it. Collage stamping is way easy um, with just a little bit of planning, okay? That's all it takes in terms of thinking about what colors and which images you want to be the most prominent. Okay, so there's our background. The rest is pretty easy, mainly because I've done most of our die cutting and whatnot ahead of time. So let me dump out all my bits here. So I have one of these gorgeous um, Heart and Home doilies. I'm still hung up on the Heart and Home suite. It is like my favorite suite in the catalog because it's got so many products that work with so many other products. I love it when we can have cross coordination. So I have used these doilies with I think just about every stamp set and suite in the catalog, but they're just super, super versatile. And the best part is we have a re the reverse side on all of them is white, right? But I did want to use the gray. So we're going to apply a little bit of adhesive. I'm using tape here just so that I don't end up with, you know, sticky ooze coming out the holes on my doily. And I'm gonna put this on so it comes off the edge. What have I got? One, two, three, four bumps coming off the edge, okay? Then I'm gonna flip it over and trim off the excess. Okay, and there is my, that's gonna anchor my arrangement here. Now, before we add our die cut pieces, we're going to add some of this gorgeous taffeta ribbon. So this is um, the Smoky Slate. It is also retiring. It's, uh, what is this, seven eighths inches? Seven eighths, seven eighths of an inch wide. Um, so, so pretty. Reminds me of um, my husband's cummerbund when we got married. Um, it was kind of this color. So I'm just gonna take the end of my ribbon here and I'm gonna notch it. And we're going to lay this across the front of our card, right about there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of seal down. And again, we wanna try and get this straight. So we're just going to start with our cardstock straight and hopefully end up with it sitting straight across. Use the lines on your grid paper to help you with this, um, especially if you're someone who struggles with getting things straight. And then I'm just gonna wrap the end around and tuck it so I have a nice neat edge there, okay? All right, now we have some more stamped and die cut bits. Now these ones we're not going to color, but I am going to have a little fun with my Wink of Stella. So this image is stamped in the Melon Mambo, and um, I'm going to bring in my Wink of Stella. Now I'm hoping this will still work because I stamped these last night. Um, so we'll see, oh yeah, look at that. When I bring in my Wink of Stella, um, the Wink of Stella reactivates the ink and it actually sort of blends it a little bit. Did you know you can watercolor with your Wink of Stella? It is such a cool look and you get this beautiful shimmery image when you're done. So I'm just gonna come in here and activate that ink a little bit and just get those, just the blossoms um, to have a little bit more color. Okay, isn't that pretty? Oh, love it. All right, so we are going to go ahead and this is going to get adhered, um, sort of centered on our doily, uh, but then we're going to add our delphiniums to the back here. Okay, now this time I'm actually going to put my little sprigs on first. So these are cut from Smoky Slate cardstock. I'm going to add a little bit of seal to the back of my ranunculus here. And we're gonna have one come at, kind of coming off to the side. I'm gonna trim off this extra that we don't need here. And then our other one is going to kind of come up from this side, like that. I'm gonna need to add a little bit more seal to the back of this. So we're gonna pop this on. Um, yes, Laura, I use the seal um, just because it's wide and the glue dots actually show. If I were to put several glue dots here, you would see the little dots of glue on the ribbon, um, which I don't like the look of. So I used the seal because it doesn't show and um, the ribbon lies nice and flat. Good question. All right, so now we're going to add our delphiniums to the back. These guys are stamped in the polished pink, okay? So the ranunculus is in the Melon Mambo. The delphiniums are in the polished pink. Again, just to get a little bit of variation in shading here. This guy is gonna kinda come up 
I'm going to trim this guy off too. We don't need all that length. And we're going to add this guy kind of peeking out here like that. Is that going to stay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So we're going to pop that on using some dimensionals again. So I'm going to use some big bad boys here for a minute just to fill up a bit more real estate. And then I'll add a couple of minis. The nice thing about having all of this, all, this whole arrangement is you have lots of real estate to apply your adhesive to. Makes it easy to glue it. So we're going to get rid of all of our backings. And we're going to pop this on right about there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, then we have a die cut stitch banner. Now this is from my second most to be missed, mourned, uh, retiring product, and that is my Tasteful Labels dies. So this is cut using those dies. So I'm gonna stamp my Just For You. Now this again, look at how high that is. So it's not centered, so we're gonna see how this goes. I actually cut a back up in case I screw up. <laughs> I thought ahead for once. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ink this up and I'm going to try and stamp it lower. Actually, let me just, yeah, we're going to try and stamp it lower than we intend to and hope that it's just about right. Nope. Too high. Still not low enough. See, this is why we have a backup. All right, here we go. Still pretty high, but I can live with that one. All right. So we're going to pop this on. Now this is going to overlap our ranunculus just like this and it's going to be centered on my ribbon. So I want to kind of line up the notched end so that they're, they kind of are, are matched. So I'm going to add one dimensional to the end here and then a little bit of seal where it's going to overlap and I'm going to just really carefully line that up so it is centered and straight just like that okay now I want to show you a fun little thing that you can do with your background I'm not sure how well it shows can you see sort of that water those water spots on the background there I'm not sure how well they show um, but I did that just by taking an aqua painter or a paintbrush if you don't have an aqua painter and the same kind of idea that I do with my uh, wink of Stella I'm gonna do with my aqua painter now it helps to get a little bit of water flowing here we go and you just kind of flick it. You can do as much or as little as you like. And the key is to let it dry, right? Now I should have glued this onto my back background. We'll go ahead and do that very carefully <laughs> while that's drying. So again, I have a Smoky Slate cardstock base, four and a quarter by 11, okay? And again, scored at five and a half. So same dimensions as the last card. We're going to fold along our score line. I'm actually gonna put, oh, look, there's water here. <laughs> yep, we're going to have a watermarked card front. That's okay. I'm going to apply my adhesive directly to my card base just because this is still wet and I don't want to get water everywhere. I should have done this once I had already put it on, but I was so excited about splattering, splattering water everywhere. I just went for it. There we go. Okay, there is our finished card. Now we're going to add just a little bit of bling with another retiring item. That's the metallic pearls. I use these all the time. You guys have seen me use these a ton. They come in gold and silver. You get both in one pack, the gold and the silver. Um, and they are going away along with many of my other favorite things, but I'm not gonna cry too hard because I have a whole box of brand new goodies waiting for me <laughs> to play with tonight. So I'm just gonna add a couple of these guys just to add a little bit of bling. And there we go. There's our finished card. Now I'll show you what I did on the inside here. So I grabbed another piece of basic white cardstock. Okay. And I just did a little hint of the, the blending on that bottom corner. And then just a couple of the stamped images to create a little bit of a collage effect. Okay. So that is number two done and done. We'll set that aside and let it dry. All right, last one is a fun fold. You guys ready for a fun fold? This is one my good friend Patty Bennett uh, demonstrated a couple of weeks ago, and I just came across her video because I'm a little slow <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. And um, I absolutely love it, mainly because it's super easy and also because it uses beautiful DSP. It's just a great way to showcase DSP. So this one um, has a belly band. It slides off. It opens like this, and then it opens like this. Okay, so it's kind of like a triangle gatefold. 
Okay, I'm not quite sure what Patty called this fold, but it's a cool fun fold. So we are going to, I'm going to show you how to put this one together. It's quite straightforward. Now I will mention that the finished card is actually um, a quarter of an inch shorter than a, a standard card. Okay, it's actually five and a quarter inches long rather than five and a half. Okay, and I will show you that in a minute. Okay, but that's our finished card. So we're going to slide the belly band off so that I can show you how to put this together. So we'll get pull off our die cut bits for now and I'll show you how to put the card base together. So to start, we need this is our background, our back panel. Okay, it's a four by five or sorry, four and a quarter by five and a quarter inch piece. I'm, I'm using garden green here. Four and a quarter by five and a quarter. Yes, I had to second guess myself there. Four and a quarter by five and a quarter. So that's our that's gonna be our finished card size when we're done. All right. Then I have a piece of basic white that is 10 by four. Yes, <laughs> again, I had to double check. Um, 10 inches by four inches scored at five. Okay, so it's scored in the middle. So we're gonna fold that piece in half. Now you can use standard basic white or thick. I just use standard because I, I do wanna be able to mail this and, and there's a lot of layers on this one, especially with the belly band. Okay, so that's that one. Now, if you're going to do any stamping on your, your inside panel, you're gonna to wanna to do it before you glue this on, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I'm not gonna worry about it, um, but I'm just kinda of giving you that, that forewarning. But this is going to get glued on here eventually, okay? All right, next I have a piece, another piece of that fantastic Heart and Home DSP. Um, it is cut to three and three quarters by four and three quarters, three and three quarters by four and three quarters. Again, I will put all of these measurements in the description later, okay? So we're going to go ahead and glue that to the front of that folded basic white piece so that we have an equal border all the way around. So that's an easy first step. So we're just gonna stick that down. Now I should mention, if you have DSP that is directionally specific, like this one, I kind of wanted my vines to be growing upwards. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you have it in portrait orientation, okay? Next, I have three, two three and a half inch squares of DSP. Again, same DSP pack, it's the Heart and Home DSP. Um, and I've scored them on the diagonal. I'm not sure if that shows, but there's a score line on the diagonal on both pieces, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in half. Now you have to decide which pattern you want facing out. So the one that you want facing out when, on your finished card is the one you want facing out when you fold, okay? So you just wanna make sure that folds nice and evenly. Okay, so there's one and, oh, I didn't get that score line very well centered. This is where we adjust. That's what our bone folder's for. There we go. Okay, so now I have two triangles. So my fold is here on both. Okay, actually I'm gonna turn one around this way. So I got the folds on the outside. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually adhere these to the back. So I've got this basic white piece closed. I'm gonna take my triangle and it's gonna kind of eat my, my, my basic white piece, okay? So it's going to get glued flush like that. My fold, it's tucked right into um, the basic white piece just like that, okay? So I'm gonna tuck it right in. I'm gonna flip it over, open it up, and then apply a little bit of adhesive here. Okay, and again, I just let that move. So you just wanna make sure that it is centered and nice and square and flush, and then fold that over. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Your points are going to overlap, okay? They're meant to. So we're gonna, again, tuck that in nice and snug, making sure that, that that fold is right in tight. Open it up. You could certainly use liquid glue for this if you prefer. Um, doesn't really matter. I just like my seal. And we're going to adhere that like that. Okay, so that is kind of the, the basic card. It's really, really simple. Then we're gonna go ahead and glue this onto our background panel. So we'll add again a little bit of adhesive. And we're gonna center this. Hi, Penny, better late than never. Replays are your friend. <laughs> there we go. Now, can you see how that wasn't tucked quite in tight enough there? I made a little boo-boo. So we're gonna just compensate and just adjust our fold there a little bit. Okay, so that's our card base. Super simple, right? All right, so now we're going to make our belly band. So I'm gonna set this aside and bring in 
the belly band here. Actually, maybe I'll just slide it on here so you can see what it looks like on the card. So we're just gonna slide that over. Okay, so this uses these beautiful dies. Remember how I said I wasn't really paying attention to the dies when I bought this bundle? I didn't realize it had this gorgeous detailed ranunculus in. Oh my goodness, it's so, so pretty. So we have um, two of the dies. Now these are, and I just realized I forgot to bring my blending brush over. Um, these are cut from fresh freesia cardstock. And um, on the detailed one, I put some adhesive sheets on the back, okay, just to make it easier to glue. But before I glue, I wanted to kind of have that detailed die cut stand out a little bit. So I'll just kind of layer them. Can you see the difference there? So what I'm going to do is bring in my Fresh Freesia ink pad and my blending brush, and I'm going to apply just a little bit of ink to that detailed layer. Now, you can put as much or as little as you like. You could certainly use a darker shade of purple if you wanted it to stand out even more. Um, but I found that just a little bit of the Fresh Freesia, tone on tone, gave just enough contrast for that detailed image to really stand out. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Again, the blending brushes are fantastic for adding ink to detailed die cuts. Um, if I were trying to do this with a dauber, I probably would end up ripping <laughs> the die cut. Um, these things, they don't apply enough pressure to actually tear them. They're just awesome. All right, that looks pretty good. And look at, you get pretty patterns when you do this. So when I layer this now, can you see the, there's a little bit more contrast, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and layer and I just happen to luck out and get that lined up. It's not always that easy. Um, usually what I do is I look, when I'm trying to line these up, I look for this one that's kind of like got two bumps and it lines up with the solid that's got two bumps, okay? Just like that. So we're going to get rid of our backing here. Be very gentle while we're peeling that off and I'm gonna find my two bumps and I'm gonna line them up. So you just kind of want to take your time to make sure this lines up. Once you get it where you want it, you just burnish it a little bit. Okay, isn't that pretty? So pretty. All right, let's make our belly band. I better close up the sink before I have a disaster. Okay, so our belly band, this is a piece of the same DSP that I used on the background. You can use a different pattern if you wanted to. You could even use cardstock. Um, totally up to you. It is one by 12 inches. Okay, and we are going to just wrap this around our card base. You could probably get away with um, a shorter, slightly shorter piece. Um, I always just like to keep it at 12 by 12. If you are using um, cardstock and you wanna use an 11 inch piece, it'll totally work. So we're gonna wrap this around. Now I just wanna take care not to make this too, too tight, right? If I make it too tight, um, I'm gonna run the risk of not being able to get it back on once I slide it off, right? You don't want it to be so tight that it's hard to, to maneuver, okay? So I'm gonna make it just a little bit on the loose side. Right about there is good. Um, and I'm gonna just burnish these a little bit so that my folds are nice and crisp, okay? And again, I'm gonna slide this back on. Get that nice and straight, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. Now I'm gonna glue it so that, it doesn't really matter because of what I'm doing on my focal image, but I'm gonna glue it so that the seam will be hidden, okay, by my focal image. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. I think I'll use liquid glue. No, I won't, I'll use seal. Just so I don't run the risk of ooze. And we're gonna make sure, oh, I just, just got that where I needed it. So we're just gonna adjust that, make sure my edges line up, make sure it still slides off. There we go, okay? So there's our belly band, so simple. Now it's just a matter of adding all our bits and pieces. So we've already put together our detailed ranunculus. Look at these beautiful dyes. They almost look real, these leaves. They're so, so pretty. Um, the dye also cuts all that detail, um, the veining in the leaves are just, just fantastic dies. <laughs> and then we have some more um, of the little sprigs that we used on the last two cards. These are cut from Highland Heather cardstock. Okay, so we're going to arrange our pieces. Now, here's what I did. I actually arranged them on my card and that was so that I could make sure that my pieces didn't end up extending too far off the side when I put it all together um, and keeping me from putting it into an envelope. 
So I'm going to kind of arrange my leaves here the way I want them, okay? And then I'm gonna take and add my sprigs. So one here and one kind of coming down this way. So they're all just kind of sitting there, right? Then I'm gonna take and I'm going to apply adhesive across the middle of my ranunculus and I'm just gonna sort of plunk it down in the middle. And that's gonna pick up most of my pieces. Okay, it's at least going to give me an idea of where I want things. Then I can go back and add more adhesive to make sure they stay put. Okay, that just worked for me and it was a great way to make sure that I didn't have them extending too far off the edge and cause me problems. So there we go, we'll add this guy back in. Okay, so that's gonna go on just like that. Isn't it pretty? Oh, I love it. All right, now before we adhere this to our belly band, we're actually gonna add a little bit of ribbon. So this is the Fresh Freesia in color ribbon. It is staying, hallelujah. Um, I was so hoping this would stay for another year and it is, Stampin' Up! heard my plea. So I'm going to just take and add a little bit of adhesive to the front of my belly band here. I'm gonna start my ribbon. I'm gonna wrap it all the way around and then I'm gonna add a little bit more. Again, you could totally use glue dots here. Um, I'm just using the seal because it's handy and easy, okay? But glue dots will work. So we'll trim that off, okay? So there's our ribbon. And now we're ready to go ahead and add this. Now we are gonna pop this up on our belly band. So I'm going to make sure I'm only putting my dimensionals on the band. I'm not putting them on my ranunculus. If I do that, <laughs> I'm gonna end up sticking this whole thing on and I'm not gonna be able to open my card, okay? So I'm going to take and apply some dimensionals across my belly band here and don't be shy we want to make sure this stays put right this is going to get pulled on and off the card so we want to make sure that we have enough there that this is going to stay put all right so we can peel off our backings <laughs> thanks louise yeah, it works well, Laura, just so that, again, we make sure that we're not um, extending too far off the edges. So just kind of layering them all on there and then sticking them down makes it a quick, easy way to do it. All right, so there we go. And again, we'll just do the test. Yes, it still slides, we're good, okay. Couple more steps, we're going to add our stamped label. So this is cut using a yet another retiring product. This is the Hippo Happiness dies. These awesome label dies are going away. So another must have in my book. Um, so I'm gonna stamp that just for you sentiment again in the basic gray. And once again, I'm gonna try to get this a little bit lower than I did last time. So we're gonna do this really low. Oh, a little bit too, th too far to the right. Good thing I have a backup. <laughs> when you have stamps that are not quite cut correctly, you kind of have to compensate. There we go, that one's perfect. Fourth time's the charm, right? <laughs> All right, now this is just gonna get glued right directly onto my ranunculus, okay? I'm not gonna apply any adhesive to this end um, just for fear of sticking it to my card itself. I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna take and apply a little bit of seal to the end of my label here. And we're gonna pop that on right about there. Okay, and then we're gonna tie a cute little bow using this same ribbon. Oopsie, it's slippery ribbon today apparently, because I have glue on my finger. <laughs> it wants to stick to the sticky fingers rather than where I want it to go. All right, so there is our cute little bow. I'm making my bow fairly small, um, again, because I don't want it to get in the way of putting this into the envelope. So we'll just trim our tails here. And this is gonna get tucked right sort of in the corner here by our leaves. So I'm just gonna grab a glue dot and we're gonna pop that on just in the corner there like that. Isn't that pretty? I love this fold, Patty is a genius. It's such a simple, simple fold, but um, really, really fun and a great way to showcase our beautiful DSB. All right, now let me get rid of this really messy grid paper here so I can line up all of our cards again so you can see them all finished. There's our 
Oh, there's still a couple of splatters that are wet. <laughs> I want to take a long time to dry. All right, so there are our three projects for today. Now I want to show you one more collage um, card that I made. So this one, same basic technique as this one. Um, however, I actually incorporated the two floral images in my collage as well. Okay, so I didn't use this border stamp. I used the collage ones instead. Now, I didn't want to showcase this one in my video because there's lots of embossing on it. And uh, I just didn't want to take the time to do that in the video today. But um, so here I use shades of brown. And then my last touch was a little bit of Blushing Bride. Add a little tint of pink. Um, another retiring product, the Parisian Flourish embossing folder is going away. So this is some of our brushed gold cardstock embossed with that bossing, embossing folder. And then I had to bring in a spatter stamp. So I used the spatter stamp and actually the sentiment from the Daffodil Daydream stamp set. So really pretty, super simple. There's that little fleur de lis die cut, um, but really fun to just play with layers and ink. Okay, on the inside, again, I did similar to what I did on this card, a little bit of blending, created the collage just along one side. Okay, so there we go. There are some ranunculus romance projects for you. I hope you like those. And again, check my video later this evening. I will have all of the measurements up for all of the cards. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.